Paul said, the Apostle Paul said, I know nothing among you except Christ crucified. So that means Christ died, right? That means he is now raised from among the grave and has immortality in the state of vivification, made alive beyond the reach of death. He holds the keys to death. When Paul says, I know nothing among you except Christ crucified, when you are focused on sin, I was just thinking about Christians. I was just thinking about anybody, a believer. It doesn't matter. If you think about not seeing God, and seeing God is seriously seeing Christ. It's that simple. And only God makes you do it. That's what's the beauty of the simplicity. It's not even up to you how simple it is. It's stupid. It's literally considered stupid. To the point where if you're seeing sin, you're not seeing God. Because God does not see sin. He creates it. It's a, it's it's dead to him. He sees Christ. He doesn't need sin any longer. Does sin still exist in the world? Yeah. God is so wise and aware of what he's doing that he has caused every being, spiritual, terrestrial, subterranean, celestial, terrestrial, subterranean, each of us are made aware of something. It's either Christ to see God or nothing. Sin. Lack of. Not life. Not God. What it is, is God either makes you aware or he does not. He blinds your apprehension. And he is merciful to all. He, is, he has made all of humanity to be under a veil of ignorance. I, I told you guys about this in the last video. Think about the simplicity. You're either seeing Christ and grace is sufficient or it's not and you're seeing sin. Now, if you're a believer and you get pulled back and forth between focusing on your behavior, being a decent human being, and by decent, we know that Paul said there's no one doing kindness, there's no one righteous, there's no one, there's no one believing apart from God. God makes a believer. Who does God save? those who do not believe what did Christ die for every sin even the unpardonable sin what is the unpardonable sin the sin of unbelief it's denying God it's denying Christ that's why Israel killed him because they didn't believe he was who he said he was for a reason God knew God had everyone's desire deep down figured out to the point where he can delegate, God can righteously delegate the adversary to be doing what the adversary will be doing, which is killing, lying, destroying. He's not good, never has been. He's been sinning since his beginning. Since Satan's beginning, he has been sinning. He was never Lucifer. That's a bunch of bullshit. It's made up. Just like hell is a bunch of bullshit. It's made up. The word H-E-L is actually pretty close to Hades, the unseen. Those people back then didn't even know what they were messing up. And now, on every church corner, you see things about grace when you know damn well that they believe in a place called hell that is not graceful. That's not grace to burn your children forever or to annihilate them. That's not grace. Not even the circumcisionists believe in hell. Even South Park has a little Jewish character named Kyle. And his parents understand, we don't believe in hell, we're Jews. Now, I can go on a tangent about the world Jews and what Israelites truly are and the circumcisionists. They believe Christ is the Messiah. That's all they need to know. We know nothing among any of the body of Christ or anyone who we don't even know is a believer or not. All we know among them is Christ crucified. Just because we realize that we are a new creation does not mean that these non-believers will not believe. They will believe. God will make them to believe. He saves them that they may be believing. What does he save you from? Sin and death. What is sin? Not seeing God. Missing the mark. God always hits his mark. Even with sin, God hit, <laughs> hits his mark. He hit his son. He put a hit on his son and hit the mark. 
who else will do that? There was this guy in the beginning of Israel's time. I think his name was Abraham? Yeah. Through the seed of Abraham came Israel. God made this to be so. Job? Job was long before Israel, long before Abraham. And yet he was faithful to God. Who knew of God other than those that God had unveiled himself to? Is God invisible? Yes. Does God have righteous delegation? Yes. Does God have a way to delegate through good celestial beings that he has a plan for humanity? In Isaiah, it talks about God knew the end from the beginning. You're telling me that we had to wait till Paul to find out that there was more to life than what we knew here on physical terrestrial earth? No, dude. We have an abundance of grace now. Does that mean go and sin? No. But even the sin that the flesh is doing now in you, the spirit is warring against it. Not for any reason other than the glory of God. And the glory of God is so righteous and his plan is so good and full and complete and good that the glory cascades off him and gives us vivified life. We just realize it before everyone else because he makes us realize it. I know this is a passionate video. The passion comes from realizing that this glimmer that you have is literally your life. You are the walking, illuminated, prepared steps. You are the physical manifestation of God's righteousness on the earth. We are not of this world. We are in this world. And soon we will be plucked from it. Soon, as my friend Rob Weil, our brother Rob Weil, told me, he's been on this earth for 55 years. I'm 24, almost 25 in a few weeks. You know what that means? He's lived more than twice as long as me. Has he experienced a lot? Yes. Does God lack in making us go through the things we go through no do you know what god does delivers us from evil if he will do this for israel when they ask imagine the things we can't even imagine to ask about god's still giving it to us a gift he gifts us it's not up to us to open it that's some christian bullshit you can't help but open it there's a desire god places in the creation to see the creator. And guess what? Paul went to a place that he was ineffable. He couldn't speak about it. All he knows is Christ crucified because he saw the glorified Christ. I believe he saw the complete body of Christ, didn't know what he was seeing, knew it was absolutely good and resembled God. Okay, we have Christ. We see Christ to see God, right? That's the head. Now imagine the body. What does the body do? The body does what the head tells it to. Now it in a righteous, good, beneficial, positive way, the only way that God knows, absolutely, even through relative contrast, God absolutely creates all to glorify him. To the point where the body is the beings that had not done what Christ did, nor God. Christ, blameless, holy, spotless, the one son of God, the true, the true, I'm saying true, chosen son of God, perfect lamb, blameless, died for all. And we are part of that all. And we are part of Christ. We're his body. I'm telling you guys, you have such a magnificent seat It's at the right hand of God. This isn't about your behavior. This isn't about the outward appearance. This is about what God is doing within you, whether you believe it or not. That's up to God. Whether others see it or not, that's up to God. You know what the beauty of God's plan is? It's all up to him, and we have to go through it to experience it because he gives us life to live. Go live it no longer acquainted with sin it's dead it's dead christ holds the keys to death what does he do with that he eventually nullifies every act of the adversary which is lying killing deceiving destroying 
And you know what God does? He takes all the attention, all the limelight and the 15 minutes of fame off of Satan and puts it on Christ. And who will be at the front row, actually at the tail end, but at the front row, at the heel of Christ? Satan, the adversary. He will have a new name. He will no longer be the adversary. He will be the friend of Christ. That almost brings a tear to my eye to think about how God is truly reconciling all through Christ because God is conciliated to it, conciliated to us now. He's happy. God is happy. The positivity and love is not some hippy-dippy bullshit. It's literally life pouring out of you daily because God makes you a funnel of all the fruits of the Spirit. You don't have a choice in that. You have a daily choice to live and you're presented with desire that overtakes your heart. You want to do this, you want to do that. You see a red sign that says stop. You stop. And if you don't, then you don't. And God has given such an intricate desire to each of us that the interconnectedness that we have now over social media, the ability to call each other anywhere in the world, pretty much any time, and see your face. This is YouTube. This is recorded. But still, I'm telling you guys, video chat, uh, uh, just observing what we're saying on video here on YouTube, the critiques are hilarious to the point where I'm like, hey, guy, live your life. God's got all your sin covered. Don't worry about mine, honestly. If you're a brother and you're encouraging me, yes, love you. This is not like condemnation for anybody. This is actually, I'm telling you guys, thank you for uplifting me. But the the little nuances that we have of like trying to decide what's a sin for each of us, hey, God knows and we will not always be in these fleshly dying bodies, these mortal bodies. Guys, we each have enough to deal with. We don't need brothers and sisters tearing at us. I'm not telling you to stop communicating. I'm not telling you to give up on caring about one another. Because when you truly care about somebody, you're with them. Whether you have something to say or not. We don't always need to talk when we are at peace with everything. But at the same time, it's okay to just be a fountain. You know, to, to, to spring forward living water that's given to you. Why not give it to your brother? They sometimes... A brother forgets that they even have a cup. You know what? Remind them. Hey, drink up. Have some milk. Have some living, breathing water of Christ. Here, have a steak, you know? That's the encouragement that I love that I see in the body. We each are afflicted to the dirt. These, these spiritual beings are not afflicted to the dirt. We have a literal, tangible existence that they envy because they cannot die. I'm not going to go off and say that we need to quarrel about whether spiritual beings die or not. I'm just going to say that God knows what he's doing, and he has us at a level of teaching and learning. He teaches, we learn. Um, are we God? No. Are we living, breathing words of God? Absolutely. Do I love you guys? Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um... I just, I had to talk about it. I had to, had to just get it pounded into you guys' head. When you're focusing on sin, you're not focused on God. Look one level deeper. Remove that veil. Slipping into the panoply of God is of God. He does it. It's his panoply. It's his covering. It's his protection. It's his armor. He makes you slip into it. Do you have any control over slipping into something? Sometimes, but when you slip, you slip. And this is a good slip. This isn't some slipping on ice and breaking your hip. This is some laying down with your lover, knowing that you're going to get covered, and you're going to be warm, and you're going to be loved. And this is an intimate thing that goes too deep for people that want to think about the consent of doctrines of demons. What else do I believe that's holding me back from believing that grace actually is grace? What am I being held back from that is of God. Is is he putting a delusion in front of my head? No. God 
will be unveiled to who he chooses to be unveiled to when he chooses so. It's not because I'm saying this in a video that it's not happening or is happening in your life. That's not up to me. I'm just... I, I couldn't even tell you who I am to this world. I just know that I know what I know. And I know that God is true, though every man is a liar. I let the Spirit speak. And though God is inaudible, He has words in his living breathing word of God truly is Christ it's the perfect image of him his son just like Forrest he's the perfect image of me is he me? no but I'm sure he's going to grow up and pick up on mannerisms say things be certain ways look a certain way literally look a certain way I'm not saying that about believing now here on earth you don't have to look any certain way god makes you a light whether you want to be a light or not for those that he delegates to be believing that paul's evangel is truly of the risen christ yes god has you he's lit you up like you wouldn't believe you're better than any fourth of july finale that's ever existed and guess what you have no choice in how beautiful you are made to be that glimmer is you it's crucial man it's crucial it's crucial and guess what all we're doing is reflecting Christ reflecting God because God said yeah we're doing this boys and girls children oh mine I love you I love you I love you I love you Never mind what I say about frequency, about when I'm putting videos out, what I'm talking about. Guys, if you don't want to listen, don't listen. But if you do, I appreciate you. If you don't want to hear it because it sounds like I'm coming at you, I'm not. Trust me. I love you. I have all of y'all up in my mind. And there's people on here that I don't even know that view and listen to the things I say and they don't ever comment. You know what? I love you guys. Whether you comment or not, whether you keep this internalized or not, whether you're very outward with what God has given you, it's not a religious thing. You don't have to be outward in a way that the world considers it. God has a simple, beautiful plan for everything that he is orchestrating through his creation, especially believers. That's where the focus is. We are on a celestial uh, theater. We're in a celestial theater. And this isn't entertainment for them. This is a learning lesson for celestial beings. This is a life lesson. Life, death, grace, joy, and love. I could keep going and talking about it, but you know what? God's making it happen in real time. So I suspect you will. You are right there with me in spirit as God makes you to be. It's a warmth you can't deny. It's a cool breeze that feels so free that he makes it yours. It's it's an embrace that you don't let go of. Because it has a hold on you. It's not restraining. It's slavery to life and love. I, I can't I can't tell you guys how good God is you will simply experience it you will experience him and his grace and mercy and love for yourself and that's that's just all him it's all him because he said so he said he spoke and it was Christ dude Christ was the surrogate he's the he's the avenue in which all goes forth and all returns he is the collection of all he is the image of all uppercase and lowercase Christ is Christ is an incredible brother you know when you just got a homie you have a friend you have a brother that just looks out for you even if you don't know what they're doing why they're doing it you know it's for the good of the situation and just overall life Hi, Morgana. Hey, Morgana. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Christ is 
that bro. He's the perfect image of God. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, I'll quit scrambling your brains with joy and peace and love, and I'll let you all get back to doing what God has for you to do. Be at peace. You're always at peace. It's just sometimes we forget, and that's the times where it kind of sucks. But um, Stay crucial. You're, you're always crucial. Nothing will pull you from that. God will keep you there in the state of crucialness. Absolute crucialness. You're rel- we're all relative. This isn't a conundrum. This isn't a focus on this or that. No, you're always crucial in the absolute and in the relative. Always. Love you. In the absolute, relatively, absolutely. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you guys. Here's Forrest for less than 10 seconds. Hi, baby boy. Hi, baby boy. Hey, you gotta smile for the people. Doo doo. Sick, Rachel.